Give your excellent God some excellent praise. Come on, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, let us exalt his name together. In all the earth, hallelujah. Excellent is your name in all the earth. You are our God. You are our Father. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the lover of our soul. You're gooder than good. Thank you for being God all by yourself. There's none like you. Thank you for being consistent. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Thank you, God, for keeping us, as the old folks say, when we didn't want to be kept. Thank you for loving us when we were less than lovable. We honor you today. An excellent God deserves excellent praise. Free us from ourselves that we might give ourselves freely unto you. Loose every shackle in the name of Jesus that we might be free for whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Gracious God, loose my lips in the name of Jesus. I decrease that you might increase. We need a word from you. Bless your children that they might give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all those who serve an excellent God, Say amen and amen. Would you just clap your hands and give God some more praise because he's good? Hallelujah. Would you look at somebody and just look at them and say, I'm praising God for your breakthrough. Come on, give God praise for all the ministry gifts in this place. Come on, give God praise for all of the ministers, all the deacons, all the trustees, for my queen, Dr. Alexis. Come on, give God praise for everybody. Amen. I'm excited. Y'all need a word today. I mean, the sun and came out. They said the sun will come out tomorrow, but it came out today. Come on, give the Lord praise if you would. Would you give God praise for our servants, our friends, the mayor of Mattis and Sheila, Chalmers Curran, who are visiting with us today. Would you give God praise for her? 
Come on, a servant. She does great work. She does great work in our midst. Amen. And then we've got an extraordinary young man who's running for Illinois Secretary of State, Alexei Janulius. Come on, give God praise for him if you would. Praise the Lord. I see Queen Pam Morris up there. Give God praise. Everybody got masks. I don't know who everybody is. Uh, Queen Morris, she's one of the first ones who said, you're going to be all right when I got here 21 years ago. Come on, give God praise for her if you would. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, uh, Mr. Janulius. I kind of I like you, man. You want to expand voting rights. My great-grandmama and them got in trouble for voting. Amen. So thank you for preserving. Amen. Do y'all need a word this morning for real? I know y'all are moving. You may have to move because you're trying to hit a lot of places at one time. That's all right. The Bible says in verse 3, I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. Ain't nobody going to be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. God wanted me to tell all of us on this weekend that the promise is still your promise. Ah, you need to let that marinate. The, the promise is still your promise. Uh, let me put it another way. Uh, uh, that promise is still your promise. I, I wish you just tap somebody or, or just wave at them and just tell them it's yours. It's yours. The, the promise is still your promise. Uh, it, it's mine. You may be seated. The promise is still your promise. There, there have been some delays. There have been some struggles. There have been some trials. There have been some tribulations. There have been some setbacks. There's been some setups. There have been some detours. There have been denials. There's been demonic activity. But God wanted me to tell you that the promise, it is still your promise. It, it, uh, the promise is still your promise. I, I might just say that for the rest of the time. The promise is still your promise. The promise is still my promise. Note that God is saying the promise and not a promise. Because there's the difference between a promise and the promise. Jerry, anybody can make a promise, a declaration or assurance that they will do a particular thing that it's going to happen, but a promise is just a promise. And it's only as good as the one who's making the promise. If somebody broke makes a promise that they're going to give you a million dollars, that's just a promise. But if a billionaire makes a promise that they're going to bless you with a little bank in the name of Jesus, that's a promise that they have the power and authority to keep. Often they make promises that they neither intend nor have the ability to keep. Anybody ever made a promise to you that they didn't keep? I promise you, I'll never. I promise you, next time. I promise you, I ain't going to do that no more. God, I promise, if you ever get me out of this one, I promise that I ain't going to do that stupid no more. Uh, but, but you real, really begin to realize that it's just another empty promise. They don't, they won't, they can't keep the promise because it's often just a promise. 
But when the Lord God Almighty makes a promise, when he makes a promise, you can rest assured that his promise is going to come to pass. If you serve an excellent promise-keeping God, I dare you to think about what he promised you and just give him some crazy praise right there by yourself. Don't nobody even need to know why you're doing it. You're like, God, I thank you that you're going to keep it. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. The Bible says, does he speak and then not act? He asked the question. Does he promise and not fulfill? When God makes a promise, you can rest assured that his promise is coming to pass. Even when I don't keep my promise to him, God can go back on his own word. He going to keep his promise that he made. God cannot lie the Bible says for the promises of God are in him yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us in other words his promise is for us but his promise gives him glory God gets the glory out of fulfilling the promise that he has made in your life because it shows God excellent, strong, and mighty even when he's working through a broken vessel. Somebody ought to holler, promise me, God. Regardless of your present predicament, your predicament, your situation, your condition, God says the promise is still your promise. And this text helps us understand it. Here we have the children of Israel after having been uh, liberated from 400 years of slavery. Hit somebody and tell them, you're free now. Act like it. You're free. But they've been wandering through the wilderness for 40 years. Somebody holler, 40 years. Ain't nothing worse than getting free and then still being on lockdown for 40 years after God has done a mighty thing to deliver you. Hit somebody again, tell them you free, you free. But here they're on the threshold of Canaan land. They're east of the Jordan. They're near the mountain areas of Mount Nebo where Moses looked over the territory. And the word of the Lord comes to Joshua, the new leader of the new generation. It says in verse 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. God says to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Come on now, not Moses. Moses, the deliverer. Moses, the one whom God used to part the Red Sea. Moses, the Bible says that there was no prophet that had risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Moses would go into the presence of God and come out with a glow on his face, the Shekinah glory of God, because he had been in the very presence of God. Moses, the one who gave the law to the people of God. Moses, the man of God, the servant of God, the voice of God to the people of God to get them through what they had been going through. To the leader of the next generation, God says to John, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Hear me. The promise is your promise. Hit yourself and say, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Come on, say it till you convince yourself. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. The promise is mine, the promise is mine. The promise is still your promise, but it will almost always cost you the death of your Moses. Let's just walk through. Uh, the promise is your promise, but it will almost always cost you the death of your Moses. Moses can be different things to different people, but Moses is often the one you've served and the one who served you most. 
that. Moses may be a secure economy. Moses may be that job that you had. Moses may be a position or a person. Moses may be your retirement portfolio. Moses may be your good health. Moses may be your source of income. For many, it's a sense of security that don't make sense because ain't nothing secure but God. It, it, ain't, it ain't a sure thing that you're going to walk out of here in your right mind but God. You never think that your Moses is going to die. And there's never a good time to lose your Moses. But the worst times to lose your Moses is in bad times and in the in-between times. It ain't nothing like losing what has worked for you when nothing seems to be working. And it ain't nothing like losing what's been working for you when you're in between the already and the not yet and unsure space where you're not sure what's coming next. Has anybody had some some of your Moses mess up on you. Come on, you need to hear me. Here the children of Israel are on the verge of, protect, uh, of possessing their promise. Yet they're still in the wilderness. And they're on the east side of the Jordan. They've been delivered from bondage. But they're still wandering in the wilderness. Uh, they, they, they're on the border of their blessing. Tell somebody, you right there, baby. On, on the border of their blessing, and now their deliverer dies. God promises to deliver them to the promised land, but God, you gonna allow Moses to die. As a matter of fact, you told Moses he wasn't gonna make it in. Moses didn't die because he was old. Moses died because he wasn't allowed to make it in. Uh, but, 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 but though Moses was used to deliver, Moses was not the one who was gonna do the delivering. God was. And just because God uses someone or something to deliver you in one season does not mean that they're going to be available for God to use them in your coming season. Some of you are mourning stuff that is from your season past. And you always want to be a new you in 22. You want to go to the next level. But God says, I can't use the old Moses to get you into the next level. So I got to get rid of your Mo. Oh, y'all don't hear me. They had an expiration date and you didn't even know it. Oh, just walk with me real good. I'm going to hurry up because you got somewhere to go. When God is ready to deliver you to your promise, he often removes that which he has used to deliver you to your present. God says, I brought them in and I used them to get you to where you are, but it's only to get you to where you are. And if you keep holding on to them, you'll be stuck where they are, hear me, and folk don't even know where they buried Moses. You keep going back and digging up stuff that's dead bones already. And God said, I know the plans I have for you. What you had is not what you'll have because what I have for you is greater than you've ever experienced. Somebody give God praise for Moses. Give God praise for Moses. When God is ready to deliver you to your promise, he often removes those things. God, hear me, y'all. God often blesses what he breaks. And he often breaks what he blesses. This is my body. It is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance. I mean, we have communion. Don't understand what it costs for you to walk in newness of life. He often thins the crowd, Gideon, before.
before he settles on an army that he can get the glory out of. He often lets the seed die before it comes to life to become multiple seed. You trying to resuscitate something that God has already killed. You trying to resuscitate something that ain't good for you in your next level. Do I have anybody up in here who ain't afraid to let it go so God can move you to the next place? Jesus says a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and it dies. If it doesn't, it remains a single seed. I don't know about you, but I love when my God does multiplication. I don't need God to add. I need God to do some exponential multiplication. That means... Some of us are wondering, why I keep going through this? Why just when I get used to something, God shifts on me? God said, if I let you stay in it, Moses will suffocate you. You know you got to get up out of it, but you've been afraid to get up to it. See, you need to understand, be, God gets rid of Moses because after the death of Moses, it's then when God can reiterate God's promise and you in the place to hear it. As long as Mo was talking in your ear, you couldn't hear God because you couldn't discern whether it was God's voice or Moses' voice because Moses has been so reliable. Oh, you ain't hear me. You remember that your boy Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and holy and lifted up. Wasn't God high and holy all the time? But he couldn't see God as long as he had a king who was helping things prosper. God says, you get it twisted. You think what I've given you is making you. You think the person that I gave you is the one that's doing it. But God says, I give and I taketh away. You got to learn how to celebrate when they come and give it glory when they go. Moses, my servant is dead. Somebody holler, he's out of here. He said, now then, verse 2, you and all these people, y'all get ready to cross over the Jordan into the land I am about to give you. To the Israelites, to your cousin Shana, to Gerard, to Gerald, God says it's time to cross over. Would you point at somebody? They don't have to see your lips. Just tell them it's time to cross over. Tell them it's time to cross over. Get ready to cross over the Jordan into the land that I am giving you. God says, I know you've been through some changes. He says, I know these last couple of years have been hell on earth. He says, but what you need to understand is that they were on expiration. He says, there's been the termination of a previous season. He says, but the promise is still your promise. He says, COVID can't stop the promise. Your loved one leaving here can't stop the promise. You wanting to leave here yourself can't stop the promise. He says, get ready to cross the Jordan. He says, the only thing that standing between you and your promise is the Jordan. And God said it's just the Jordan and you need to get ready to cross over that thing. Y'all need to hear me. The Jordan is not so much an obstacle as the Jordan is an opportunity. The Jordan is not so much an obstacle as it is a portal. It's a pathway. It's a bridge over troubled water. God says that thing that's been plaguing you ain't nothing but a pathway to what I have for you. You so busy looking at the current of the Jordan that you don't look at the God of the Jordan and you thinking about, you think I brought you through all the hell. I brought you through to let a little water stop you from getting to what I have for you? Do you think I let you get through that diagnosis? Get over that season of grief? Be broken? Can't pay attention to let you die on the bank of your blessing? Do you really think that I'm going to let a little imp or two keep you from what I have for you? You better give God some praise because it's just a Jordan. It's just a Jordan. 
I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on, B, I'm going to go on, Brian. See, the deal is, there's always an obstacle, but if you and God have a promise, you need to start getting ready for your move. Is there anybody expecting God to do something? Come on, anybody believe in God that's going to do something? I dare you to give God praise. Come on, because it ain't nothing but a joy. You, you trying to figure it out. God says, don't look at that. That ain't nothing but a joy. Anybody receive that it's your next level season that God is about to do some stuff. When you're dealing with it, it's nothing but a joy. But you got to expect some stuff. I, I expect some stuff. You got to hope against hope. And regardless of how hopeless it is, you got to say, God, I see you. I, I see you doing some things. I, I see me in my future, and it looks better. I see me. God said, you're going to have some tribulation. You think you ain't in the will of God because you got some tribulation tripping all around you. God says, it's because you're in my will that you've got tribulation going on all around you. Uh, and see, can I help you? God told me to tell you, can't nothing stop you from what he has for you but you. Not the situation, not your money, not people not supporting you no more. God said, ain't none of them got nothing to do with what I'm about to do with you. He says, if you keep your eye on the author and the finisher of your faith, it makes no difference where Fred goes, where Frida goes, where Cheryl goes, where Sam goes. God said, I got you. He says, you got to be willing to go on without them. See, the problem is the only thing that keeps us from walking into our destiny is fear. You got a poker face, but you scared. You know how to look like you have faith, but you scared. You know how to act holy, but you scared. If you wasn't scared, you tithe. If you didn't have a spirit of lack, you'd give and not worry about where it's coming from. If you didn't have a spirit of fear, you'd forgive and wouldn't worry about whether they deserved it or not. If you didn't have fear, you'd love folk. Oh, we worry, we worry. Tell somebody we got fear, we got fear. That's why in verse 6, can I skip around again? Uh, homileticians don't try this at home. Verse 6, God says, Jay, be strong and courageous. Mama, be strong and courageous. Verse 7, he says, be strong and courageous. King James says, be very strong and courageous. Verse 9 says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. God says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Man up. Be strong and courageous. Woman up. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Before you got saved, could nobody talk to you like that? Now that you've gotten saved, the devil is busy. God said, man up. Woman up. Be strong. Be courageous. My boss just keep Be strong and courageous. I don't know what I'm going to do, but if I do this, something going to happen. Nothing keeps us from fulfilling God's promise and our purpose like being afraid. Procrastination, that ain't you just got a, I just got a procrastination problem. You got a fear problem because you're trying to be perfect and don't understand you're being perfected, so it takes you longer to get it done than to have it done. You, you scared to go back to school because you think you ain't smart enough. The devil is a liar. You scared to start your business because you comfortable on Massa's plantation. But that ain't what God has ordained for you to do. If you can move from Mississippi to Matson because a job move you, you can move from Matson to Texas to start your own destiny. In the name of Jesus, God says, be strong. Strong. Be courageous. Be very strong. Be very courageous. You need to understand. God understands that there's fear. That's why he says be strong and courageous. God understands that there's some stuff that ought to cause you concern. The war in Ukraine. A crazy man who's a, a addicted to Botox. A crazy man who at any moment might deal with nuclear weapons. COVID is still 
lurking everywhere. Crazy folk who drive 200 miles to go to a black <laughs> supermarket to try to get rid of folk who look like you and me. Y'all ain't hear me real good. But God says, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but power, but love, and a sound mind. That's why, because you need the spirit of the word to combat the spirit of the enemy. God says, be strong, be courageous. But what if I do this? What are they going to do? You be strong and be courageous. Some of y'all stay in death nail relationships because you scared to make it on your own. They're a resource. They ain't the source. God is excellent. I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on. The Bible says be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Then he says the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing. Whenever I start getting anxious, I can't look and talk about the problem. I got to open my mouth and begin to start giving God praise. When I start looking at how it might turn out, how it probably will turn out, how, oh, y'all don't hear me, I start giving God glory because I'm in the middle of it and in everything. You got to give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you when you get the tax bill in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you in everything give thanks hallelujah do I have anybody going through anything I dare you to give God praise in it all give God glory in it all give God praise in it all pastor we're going toward a recession give God praise in everything because the cattle on a thousand hills belong to my father God doesn't run on this economy God she said don't worry about tomorrow he said tomorrow has enough worries for itself he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. I'm, I get tickled that folks don't want to praise God, but you'll scream and act a fool when somebody's leaving you. You don't want to give God glory, but you shout and fall out when they transition you on your job. I dare you to use your educated MBA, PhD, CPA, no G at all, to give God some glory in everything. Give thanks for the Come on, let's have a praise party real loud. Open your mouth. Get... Somebody holler, my promise, my promise, my promise, my promise, my promise, my promise. No more fear, my promise, no more scared, my promise, no more timidity, my promise. Think about that fool and then give God some praise. My sister got a jig going. Go on, God. Uh, uh, uh. See, some of y'all won't praise him. Either because you don't believe him or you scared somebody going to judge you because you're more intelligent than it. I, I used to be that way. I, I thought I was too intelligent. My mom and daddy spent too much money for me to get a degree to be giving God praise. I thought I was too cute. My waves laid just right. But what you need to understand that even if you bought your hair, it's only God that allows you to keep your hair. I dare you to open your mouth and give God some praise. He's degree and didn't lose your mind you ought to open your mouth so you don't lose your mind you 
have to believe that the promise is your promise. When I look at what I'm looking at, when I'm going through what I'm going through, when I look at what I've done, sometimes it's hard to believe that a promise like this is for a person like me. But I'm so glad that it doesn't depend on me. It's only his grace and his mercy. Sorry, I'm sorry. I grew up Methodist. I know better than this. You got to believe that it's your promise and that it's applicable to your problem. My problem, my promise, my mess, my promise. You see, see, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy and even religious people will try to make you believe that you don't deserve to claim it as your promise. That's why good stuck up church folk are the worst. That's why the Moses and Mosettes need to die because that all that tradition and religion and all of that stuff, like you don't question God and you don't cry and you need to be strong. You need to get the heck out of my face before you done. You gonna tell me how to grieve? Don't, don't grieve like that. You gotta be strong for the kids. No, I don't. The kids need to watch me to see how good grief happens. They need to help me to understand that you can be like David and cry out before God, sackcloth and ashes. And if God does it, God does it. If God decides he gonna heal on the other side, let God do it. But as for me and my house, my God is excellent enough to let me express all of my emotions. Them religious people get on my nerves. That's why I wasn't trying to get saved. I wasn't trying to come to church. And I sure wasn't trying to be a pastor. Folk will make you think you don't deserve to receive the blessed promises of God. Oh, come on, come on, come on. They, they, they will act like you ain't qualified. But thank God that nobody on the horizontal plane has the power to qualify me for the promises and blessings of God. As stanky and wretched as I am, Jesus came to qualify me and make me the righteousness of God. Is there anybody here that believes that they are the righteousness of God? By faith, you got to believe that you deserve the promise. By faith, you got to believe that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Romans 3, 21. I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to get on. It says, by now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Listen, Romans 3, 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. I just want to know, do I have any believers in here? Do you believe that Jesus shed his blood for all of your stuff? Come on. See, then by faith, you've got to believe that you can claim the promise that God is giving to the children of Israel because in Christ Jesus, you are... Uh, what not y'all singing about Abraham earlier this morning? See, I don't even tell them what I'm doing because I want to make sure they pray and I pray so that I can get confirmation when somebody gets up here and prays so that we know we own the same we know how to do stuff in excellence but you don't want to craft the program in such a way that you can hear what God is saying on today listen these mugs 
were to be the fulfillment of the promise given to Abraham. Come on, can, can, I, can I teach you just a couple of seconds? Genesis 17, verse 7, starting with verse 3, it says, Abraham fell face down. God said to him in Genesis 17, verse 4, as for me, this is my covenant with you. Talk, God. You will be the father of many nations, though your body is good as dead. No longer will you be called Abram. I'm about to make you into a new you. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. Check this out. Verse 7. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Listen to verse 8. The whole land of Canaan where you are now an alien, you ain't got it yet. But I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Understand then that those who have faith are the children of Abraham. Come on, come on. I know that you Tommy and Danita's child, but before you were their child, you were sons and daughters of Abraham in Christ Jesus. Uh, him who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be the recipients and receive the blessings of Abraham by faith. You're a child of Abraham. By faith, you can receive the promise. By faith, you can walk in the promise. By faith, you can claim this promise that whoever blesses you, God will bless. Whoever curses you, God will curse. I'll make your name great. That's why I see you don't, you don't let no enemy make you come to church and feel like a hypocrite even though in the natural you may be acting like one when you claim by faith that you are the seed of abraham everything that god promised abraham the, 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 it, it's coming to you go back to our text the lord says to joshua verse three i will give you every place See, you messing around trying to get a house. God says, I'm trying to give you houses. I'm trying to give you land. But you stuck in your carnal generational background. Ain't four of y'all supposed to graduate with degrees coming from the hood on the same day. That don't make no sense. He said, I will give you every place where you set your foot. He says, as I promised Moses, uh, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the Great River, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, you need to understand that I will be with you. Can I help somebody? The promise belongs to you. Somebody holler, the promise is still mine. The promise is yours because in 5a, he says, I was with Moses, so I'm going to be with you. He says, I promise you my presence so that wherever you go, I'm going to be. He says, I was with Daniel, I'm going to be with you. I was with Isaac, I'm going to be with you. I was with Ruth, I'm going to be with you. I was with Jacob, I'm going to be with you. And in my presence, it's full fullness of joy. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear no evil. He says, because I'm with you. His rod and his staff will comfort you. God says, I got you. Somebody holler, God's got me. He says, the promise is yours because I'm present with you. He says, the promise is yours because I'm going to protect you.
Verse 5 says, no one will be able to stand up against you. Not just on this Monday, but all the days of your life. He says, nobody is going to be able to stand up against you. Your boss can't touch you. Your adversary can't touch you. Your enemies can't touch you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And anything they say about you, it shall be condemned. God says, I'm going to make your enemies your footstool. God says, they're plotting and scheming, but they'll come in one direction and they'll flee in seven directions. God said, they're coming up against you, but God's going to lift up a standard against them. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. God is your refuge and your strength a very present help in times of trouble. The enemy will come in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Your enemies going to flee before you. I'm going to go about my business. Then God got the nerve to say, and I'm going to expand your territory. Hit somebody and tell them, scoot over. I know you got a seat between us, but you need to move because God's about to spread me out. God's about to extend my territory. God's about to bless me exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can even imagine. I'm going through right now, but Tobin, my God, shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All you got to do is take action. Take action. Every place your foot shall try shall be your inheritance. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. His word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. If God says go, you gotta go. If God says run, you gotta run. If God says sow, you gotta sow. If God says dance, you gotta dance. God said, for now you're gonna be prosperous and successful. He said, but you got to stop being scared to do what God tells you to do. Even though it looks crazy to them and it looks crazy to you. God said, God said, God said, the promise, because it's still your promise. You understand, Red? I did some time. I've been to the university. You don't understand. God, I got seven sets of kids from seven sets of sisters. You don't understand. Oh, psh, I know who I'm talking to. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't understand. You don't understand what's in my bloodline. You, you don't understand. I ain't been sober long. You've been sober long enough to claim the promises of God and walk in your stuff. Stop letting these religious fools keep you from getting what God has for you. Stop letting people keep you from God. They don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. You just need to give God glory and fix your eye on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. I'm going to go on this. 11.34, 11.35. Twelve thirty-five Eastern. Cause it the promise is still your promise. He says when, when he says he gonna be the head, not the tail. He says I'm talking to you. When you are gonna be above and not beneath? He says I'm talking to you. 
says, you keep thinking they're talking about somebody else because they faking prosperity. God said, I got stuff for you that you can't even imagine. He says, but you can't play church, play Baptist. I'm glad you're watching. But he says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. There's stuff I can get on my tablet, and there's stuff that I can't. You at home and broke and can barely pray for your Wi-Fi. You might come to church, and the millionaire joker that goes to church here who you think is stuck up, God just might tell them not only to give you a job, but give you some starter money so that you can go to another level. But you own the boat, you own the plane, you travel in the Natchez, Mississippi, but you're afraid to come to church. The devil is a liar. God says, I've got stuff for you to do. Y'all think I'm crazy now, no? Let me help you some. I know it's my promise. When you know it's your promise, check it out. When you stop being scared, when you stop being scared to die, you scared that you ain't going to get likes on what you post. You won't even speak up for truth because you don't want to get blasted on social media. Since when did social media really become a community? You scared of them. God says, really, they scared of you. But they know they can control you by making you wonder whether you have their approval. Oh, I'm going to go, and it's 137. It's 1137. It's 1237 Eastern. Do you realize where you'd be if you weren't afraid to fail? Do you realize how far along you would be if you didn't have to blame your mate, your kids, your boss for your arrested development? Do you realize how many people would be saved if you weren't scared? To not have the answers because you've been saved for 20 years and ain't never read the Bible halfway through? Do you realize what type of love life you would have if you weren't afraid to be transparent? You've been married for 40 years and there's still stuff that joker don't know about you. I could never tell Harold that. He'd leave me for sure. So they married to a blow-up doll. Because there ain't no real substance. And you don't have no real love. Because you afraid to admit you weak. She already know you don't have it together. And she ain't left your behind yet. Hi there. Keeping six feet. Why are you afraid? To have a real man, you'd rather have a joker you can domesticate. Ah, uh, we say, uh, 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 I want an alpha man. And you spend all of your married life trying to get him to forget where the socks are. The 
promise is your promise. Problem is we think we got to give the promise to ourselves. Soon as you trust God for real and stop trying to preserve what you present, You want your promised land? Maybe we're the Jordan that's in the way of getting to the next place. When I started caring differently, <laughs> when I started not caring that God said something as crazy like build a building during the first recession, depression, Eight months, air was going up through the ceiling, and all your friends were saying to y'all, they'll never make it. <laughs> now they see you and say, oh, yeah, boy, that's a beautiful building. That, that building looks like O'Hare Airport. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's just it's beautiful. Your pastor crazy. It's just beautiful. When you stop worrying about commentators... Even if they're in your family, even if it's your mama, because mama can't speak life if she ain't never lived life. I'm going to go on now. Our baby's graduating tomorrow, so I'm going to go on now and get some rest so I can holler. Somebody give God praise for all the graduates. You were the first one in your family, but you won't be the last in the name of Jesus. Come on, give God glory. If you're not sure you're saved, you don't have a church home. Everybody, if you're able, please stand to your feet. I, you know I honor your time. I apologize for going over. But God says you've been on the east side of the Jordan over time. It's time for you to cross over into your destiny. If you're not sure you're saved, you don't have a church home, come on. The Bible says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, delivered. Come on, quick. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. God said your Moses got to die. That old church hurt that you had from the other place, God said you got to bury that and forget where it's buried. Come on, today is your day. Pastor, I'm just not sure. This ain't a perfect church. Ah, you have discernment. And I am not a perfect pastor. But come on. We'll walk in our imperfections and God will perfect us together. Come on. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. Come on, family. Mm. If you're online, if you're watching in New Mexico, if you're watching in New Hampshire, come on. Just go to newfaith.org. Go to membership, drop down, sign up, push send, and you'll be a member. And you can get in our new member orientation class virtually. Come on. If you're not sure you're saved, you don't have a church home. Let's go. Everybody say, Amen. Come on, get a Lord praise. Hallelujah. Reverend Vine, is that next week, the 20, is it the 22nd that we're having another vaccination? Next week, next week, I think they're giving $100 gift certificates or something like that. Amen. Okay, give me the thumbs up. Oh, amen. Come on. Folks still need to get vaccinated. We done with COVID. COVID ain't quite done with us yet. Amen. So we still need to act like we got some good sense. Amen. Amen. Look, love y'all, ain't nothing you can do about it. God is so much fun, isn't he? <laughs> God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for being excellent. We thank you that you are God all by yourself. Make us strong and courageous. 
that we might cross the Jordan into our promised land that you might get the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Love y'all. Have a wonderful week.